80% of what goes into making a project look good is your finishing technique. Maybe it's 90%, 73.2. You know what? It doesn't matter. All those numbers are arbitrary anyway. I'm just making them up. In this video, I'm gonna boil down to its nuts and bolts, the process that I use in order to get the look that I like. Now in my previous video, I built my cabinet doors, but you don't have to do that. You can take your existing doors and as long as you can scuff them up with some 120 grit or 220 grit sandpaper, you can lay down a fresh coat of paint and have a brand new kitchen. And if that's the way you're going, then right here is where you're going to start your project. I have decided to paint my doors and when I do that, I always spray my finish. I don't use a brush. I don't use a roller. Laying down paint with a spray gun is the fastest easiest way to get consistent, repeatable results. Also, it's easy to adjust the texture of the finish by either thinning the paint or adjust the PSI on your spray gun. Once you've done it a couple of times, you'll know exactly what you need to do in order to get the look that you want. I have found that that's something that you really can't do with a brush or a roller. So there's a couple of things we're gonna need that you may not have just sitting around your house. One is an air compressor. I use a six gallon pancake compressor, works just fine. Second, is a spray gun. This one I have is a general purpose suction sprayer I picked up for around 30 or $40. It's been in my shop for, oh, I don't know, at least 10 years now. A second type of spray gun you could use is called a gravity fed spray gun. I don't like these, so I don't use them, and I'm not gonna go into them in depth here in this video. Of course, we can't forget about paint. The type of paint that you use, well, that's really up to you. I like to use Bayer Premium Enamel. It's around $50 a gallon. It's readily available at my home improvement store. And I find it doesn't suck. Finally, you wanna consider where you're gonna apply the paint. If you do it inside, you're gonna to want to definitely wear a respirator and cover everything. You will have this phenomenon known as overspray. And trust me, it gets everywhere. Don't ask me how I know. I, however, just do mine outside. Because, you know, simple, easy. Yes, you're going to have the odd bug or leaf fall on your wet paint. But as long as you do it on a day that's not too windy or rainy, I usually don't have a whole lot of problems with it. Of course, you could always set up a tent, move in there with your project. I don't bother with it. I just do it outside. Now, because I have built new doors in my workshop, I am dealing with a raw wood surface. So a good coat of primer is essential. This is the one aspect of this process where I do use a brush. I want and need a good thick layer of primer. That is gonna help fill in the wood grain and create a nice smooth surface for the paint top coat to adhere to. Oak, if you've ever seen that, is notorious for showing wood grain through paint. And of course that is fine if that's the look that you're going for, but if it's not, then that is where a good primer is going to help you out. Plus, unfinished wood tends to be a bit thirsty. It soaks up a lot of paint and a good primer is just going to help even things out a little bit. The rest of this video is going to be done in demonstration form because I don't like having my cameras anywhere near my spray guns when I'm applying paint because I don't like buying new lenses. And I don't know, there might be some wind noise on the mic because a storm just rolled through and we may have another one here. Plus I live in Florida and the cicadas are having a good day. So I have some cardboard that I'm gonna demonstrate this. I've stuck some water in my spray gun and I've added some food coloring. There are four components that I like to think of and keep track of when I am applying paint to a project through a spray gun. And they are going to have the biggest impact on how the finished product is going to look. The first one is going to be the viscosity of the material that you're spraying, which is basically how thick or thin the paint is. I use a three to one ratio when I'm applying, so that's basically three cups of paint to one cup of water, and that gives me a bit of texture when I apply it to the project. I don't like a finish that is completely flat and looks manufactured. If you don't like a textured look, you can try thinning the paint out a little bit more. So you can go three cups to two, or even one to one if you like it really thin and you really want that to sit flat on your project. But in my opinion, the whole idea behind custom cabinetry is not so that it looks manufactured. 
that it rolled off of an assembly line in China. I want it to look custom. So I like a bit of texture to my project, so I leave the paint just a little bit thicker. The second one is gonna be the PSI that you use to feed your spray gun from your compressor. I use a PSI between 40 and 45. I've seen some spray guns only able to handle 35 PSI or sometimes even less, so just be sure that the PSI that you want to use from your air compressor your spray gun is actually able to handle that safely. The third component is gonna be the distance that you are from your project. That is gonna change the spray pattern, how that spray hits your project, and then how it looks as you apply it. The fourth one is going to be the angle at which you apply it. And that is one where a lot of people get hung up on and they don't even realize If it. any one of those four things gets out of whack during this process, the finish on your project is going to look different from piece to piece. All right, so here I have my project and my spray gun. I like to be about 12 inches to 18 inches from my project, and I like to have my project standing on end. I don't like to apply the finish when it is flat. That angle comes into play when the project is flat on a surface as opposed to standing up like this. Have the spray begin while you're not on your project, and then sweep across your project all the way and then release the trigger. And if you notice, I didn't stand here and start from here and then sweep it across like that because that changes the angle from here, the angle is different as opposed to the angle here. And that is going to have an effect on how that finish looks on your project. So you always wanna start here, keep the sprayer at the same angle coming across your project until you're off of it and then release the trigger. Move down a couple of inches, pull the trigger again while you're off of the project, sweep completely across, keeping your angle the same and your distance the same, and then release the trigger. Repeat that process until you have completely covered your project. Now, one of the things that you don't wanna do when you're spraying is you don't wanna repeat over the same areas. When you go across, you don't wanna come across on that same angle back. That is your first coat. Leave it like that. It's not going to be perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect. You're going to be applying a second coat, maybe even a third coat. And so that's it. It's a very simple and easy process as long as you keep track of the four things, which is viscosity, the PSI, the distance, and the angle. You should be good. You will see areas that didn't get the coverage that you really wanted on your first and second coats. That's completely fine. Don't dedicate an entire coat to just the edges of a project. Let those be, and as you go through the coats, you will build those coats up on the side. If you have your project positioned properly, all of that will take care of itself by the third or fourth coat. Hey, thanks for watching. If this is your first time here, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't, and hit that bell notification so that you don't miss out on any new videos. I do projects that don't require a master's degree and I boil them down to their simple and easy components. Until then.